Hello, I'm Crispin and welcome to Poker Room Review, your guide for live poker rooms all across the world. In each episode, we review a live poker venue, discussing the important things you need to know when planning your next poker destination. For each venue, we review a range of characteristics, including location and access, game options, service and experience, and rake and rewards. We also discuss any rules, quirks, and issues we find when visiting each location. Today, we're in the island of Malta at Porto Marso Casino in St. Julian's. Malta is a picturesque island around 200 kilometers south of Sicily. Porto Marso Casino runs both tournaments and cash games every evening with around two cash tables and one to two tournaments running concurrently. Category one, location and access. Malta is a small island and St. Julian's can be readily accessed by either car or bus. The bus takes about 45 minutes and costs around three euros, whereas a car will only take about 20 minutes and you can get a taxi for around 20 euros. Porto Marso Casino is located next to the Hilton and other upmarket resorts with more affordable accommodation options easily accessible by foot in any direction. That said, unless you are planning to stay at the Hilton, our strong recommendation is that you stay in the capital Valletta instead. St. Julian's is Malta's nightlife hub and it shows. Malta is one of the great holiday destinations, but St. Julian's specifically is overcrowded, dirty, noisy, and overrun with litter and party goers. Valletta is only a short drive away, and yet this tiny ivory city built by the Knights of St. John boasts history, culture, and beauty. Not only is it a nicer location to stay, but when in Malta, you'll want to do more than just play poker, and Valletta is an idyllic base from which to explore. Malta's main bus station reaches every point of the island and also the ferry to Gozo. Valletta is a family-friendly place. You can bring children or a significant other and know there'll be plenty for them to do while you're busy at the table. I don't want to beat up St. Julian's too much though. It has every possible convenience, and if you're a party-addicted young person, it might just be your jam. The great thing about Malta is that there is so much more than poker. There's a quiet, picturesque medieval town called Emdina, sitting atop a hill from which you can overlook Malta in any direction. Gozo Island maintains Malta's classic Mediterranean charm, free from the overrun of tourist traps. Malta has unique Renaissance architecture of crusading knights, fine food and wine, and megalithic temples that predate the pyramids by millennia. To that end, you absolutely must see the Hypogeum, a subterranean temple complex built by a prehistorical civilization. Visits have to be booked weeks in advance though, but believe me, it is far more impressive than the photos you'll see online and well worth planning ahead for it. Overall, Malta is an all round great place for a short stay abroad, and Porto Marso is easily accessible from both the airport and Valletta with a great location next to the Hilton overlooking a beautiful bay. Save for St. Julian's somewhat dingy feel, it's a near perfect location, four stars. Category two, game options. Game options are a little limited in that while both cash tables and tournaments are available, they only run in the evening starting 6 p.m. or even later with no action during the day, even on weekends. There's also a limited number of cash tables, usually no more than two. This can surprise some people since Malta is famous for its major events such as the Malta Poker Festival, and a Google search can make it seem as though Malta is a European poker hotspot. Outside of these major draws, however, Malta's poker scene is subdued. While definitely available, it's not the poker mecca one might be led to believe, which is more understandable when you realize the permanent population of Malta is only around 500,000 for the whole island. Cash games are in euros and comprise either a single 1-2 table and a 2-5 table, or two 1-2 tables. The 1-2 game has a max 500 euro buy-in, which is great, although you might find that around half the players buy in quite short, often around 50 big blinds. Tournaments are a bit more popular, with usually around 50 plus entrants per day, but these all have modest buy-ins, usually less than 50 euros. 
These are still fun for the casual player, with each tournament running for around seven to eight hours to completion, and those busting out of the tournament can often find their way to the cash table. Once per week, there's also a mixed game tournament for those that prefer PLO or the game's other variants. Most visitors will choose to come to Porto Maso during the Malta Poker Festival, a week-long event that draws players from around the world, with a 500 euro main event that boasts a 500,000 euro prize pool guarantee. This is the best time for poker in Malta for every player type. Overall though, Porto Maso Casino is a fairly low-key affair for poker, given the limited tables and restricted hours. However, nightly tournaments is definitely a plus. Two and a half stars. Three, service and experience. The environment is comfortable, friendly, and relaxed. However, in some ways, Porto Maso lets itself down quite unnecessarily. During tournaments and cash games, service staff do their very best, but they're chronically understaffed and overwhelmed. Most of the time, you'll need to walk to the bar to get food and drink. And even here, there's usually only one person working. That person must take food orders, prepare coffees, make drinks, receive calls, and so on. You may find yourself being blinded out for something as simple as a glass of water. There really isn't any excuse for this. Porto Maso is a small casino, and when poker is running, demand is quite predictable. Just having one extra person rostered on each evening could improve things immensely. Things also run a bit slow at the cash tables because every money change, whether it's players buying chips or cashing out for any amount, has to be double checked by floor staff before the dealer can complete their transaction. This is standard procedure at most casinos over certain amounts, however it can be tiresome when it's 40 euros. Also, while dealers are definitely efficient, there are no shuffling machines and this naturally hurts the hands played per hour. The other issue is that the number of mistakes made by dealers here appears to be higher than the global average. Now don't get me wrong, the staff are friendly, the southern Mediterranean charm just gleams across the felt. However, some issues were truly out there. For instance, in one case, an old deck was replaced with a new deck, but with the same color. One of the cards getting mixed into the new deck and both of them coming out during a hand. Second, a tournament player at the final table was chipped up to high denomination chips, but lost half their stack when the staff calculated it incorrectly. The dealers dismissed this claim until the player insisted it be reviewed on camera, and then he was proven correct. Now, I wouldn't normally mention individual cases like this because human error occurs everywhere, but these two cases were huge and both occurred within a single 24 hour period. But don't take from this that it's all bad at Porto Maso Casino. It's absolutely not. The climate inside is comfortable, which for Malta seems oddly unique. For an island that's so warm, a lot of places don't seem to have air conditioning even in the summer heat. For instance, if you go to major national museums, they often only have fans running, and climate control is an issue for some other casinos in Malta as well. However, Porto Maso keeps the climate cool, dry, and ideal. There are also nice booths next to the poker table where you can eat delicious meals in a comfortable and civilized way without having to leave the poker area entirely. Like most casinos in Europe, Porto Maso requires players register and play with a member's card, and the registration staff are friendly, helpful, and offer a range of welcome bonuses. Just remember to bring your passport when you first arrive. Also, despite many dealers and players preferring Maltese and Italian, staff are considerate when it comes to native English speakers and dutifully announce play in English. You'll also really appreciate the Maltese player pool who are upbeat, positive, and wield a great sense of humor. Overall, there is room for improvement, but there's nothing inherently structural preventing this. Change can be readily achieved with more staff and better training, and perhaps next time we can boost these numbers. Two and a half stars. Four, rake and rewards. I've mentioned the new member discounts and bonuses, and these are valuable, but of course, temporary. At cash tables though, the rake is fantastic percentage-wise at 4%, but it has a high cap of 15 euros at the 1-2 table. It's hard to know what to make of this. Though, with so many players buying in short, you'll probably find the percentage rake agreeable given the small stack sizes. Meanwhile, the tournaments have good rake structures and these are clearly advertised for players to see on the schedule.
There really isn't any jackpots or bonuses to speak of, say for a single 500 euro Royal Flush jackpot that costs of five euros to register one off. Now at first this might seem like an absurdly bad deal, but the Royal Flush jackpot I don't think needs to be on the flop and can apply to tournaments as well. Thus, it might be worth it for a long-term resident playing regularly. If you're from Malta and familiar with this, please post the details and we'll pin it to the profile. Overall, 4% is excellent, but the high cap is less fun for those playing deep. Still, almost half the hands at the cash table seem to be awarded completely rake-free, and tournament commissions are all fair and reasonable. Three stars. Rules seem fairly standard and players show good etiquette with one another. The aforementioned Royal Flush jackpot is definitely a weird one, which you haven't seen before in this way. The casino setting is also a little unusual in that a majority of the casino staff are not running games with visiting players, but are rather standing in front of cameras like this one, streaming online. You'll see attractive young women spinning wheels and announcing bets in front of a dizzying array of lighting, cameras and microphones. Perhaps it's the unique laws in Malta, but a visit to Portomaso feels more like an online gaming company than a bricks and mortar entertainment complex. There are some things in general to stay mindful of when traveling to Malta. Accommodation is pretty expensive relative to most places around the world, especially during peak times, so plan your trip out early and try and scoop some good deals. It can get hot in summer, however it is really a must-see destination for all the wonders of history, culture and cuisine that Malta has to offer. In conclusion, you'll have a nice time at Porto Maso, but if you're a serious player, you'll want to go during the Poker Malta Festival or some other extravaganza event. Otherwise, pop in during the evenings when you're already on a family holiday for a casual night of poker of low stakes hold'em cash and tawny. In short, outside of some key, well-advertised events, poker in Malta is a low-key affair, and we wouldn't recommend going to the island exclusively for live poker during normal times, but it's a great location when combined with other attractions. Three stars. We review new poker rooms regularly, so if you found value in this content, please hit the like and subscribe buttons because it's the only way YouTube will know this is the case. Also, please, if you have access to any Facebook groups or poker forums, consider sharing this video because getting more views is the only way we can create more content. In the meantime, have you been to Porto Maso Casino in Malta? If so, what did you think? Is there anything I've missed or recommendations you'd like to include? I'm sure everyone would appreciate it. If you want to check out more reviews, you can do so right now. Otherwise, thank you for watching and we'll see you next time. Goodbye.